I'm Natalia from IntelliCAD Technology Consortium, and in this video, I will review the IntelliCAD 10.1 release. I would like to start with the new ability to insert geographic location information to a drawing using new geolocation functionality. To start working with it, you have to set location using geo command or set location button from the insert ribbon tab. You have two options here, map or file. I've chosen the map option, specified by current latitude, longitude, and coordinate system. And now we can use geolocation options from the geolocation ribbon tab. The GeoMap background is not a static image. This is like a window into Google or Bing Maps that allows you to zoom in, out, or pan to any location on Earth. Once you set your desired background location, you can clip the background to make an image. I'm selecting the map type and creating a map image using the Capture Area button. You always can modify this area later using grips or adding new areas. When you select Map Image Entity, the Map Image Contextual ribbon tab appears where you can update Map Image and optimize its resolution. The Mark Position option places a marker at the specified point in the map and annotates it. You can choose between Latitude Longitude, Current Location, and Point options. Size of the position marker is determined by the GeoMark Position Size system variable. To remove geographic location information from a drawing, press the Remove Location button. Next is Shade Set Manager. This powerful tool gives you the opportunity to manage drawings from your project as a Sheet Set. Sheet Set Manager is available through the menu file, View Ribbon tab, or Application button. The Sheet Set Manager palette is the same as for any other palette. You can move it, dock it left and right, out to hide, etc. At this point, you can create a new Sheet Set or open an existing one. I will create a new Sheet Set using the Existing Drawings option, name it, and select a folder with my project. And now all layouts from all drawings from the selected folder are displayed as a set of sheets in the Sheet Set Manager pane. I can remove unnecessary sheets, add new ones, rename, e-transmit, and most important, publish an entire sheet set or an individual sheet. Also, open option or double-click will open the drawing. IntelliCAD 10.1 supports not only new features, but new devices too, 3D connection input devices. Using 3D connection devices, you can easily access commands using programmable buttons, use custom keys, and get ultimate 3D navigation. Function keys are customized for the most useful commands and changes when switching between different modes, for example, from start page to drawing area. Quick view keys give you access to multiple predefined views and pushing, pulling, tilting or twisting controller cap, painting, zooming or rotating your 3D model. IntelliCAD 10.1 offers table functionality. To access it, use the menu draw table item, annotation ribbon tab or table command. The Insert Table dialog box inserts an empty table with the selected table style and the following options. In the Insertion Behavior box, you can select the table location. The Specify Insertion Point option by default specifies the upper left corner of your table. Specify Window option specifies the location and size of your table. Also, in this case, width and height of columns and rows depend on the window size. In the Column and Row Settings box, you can specify the number of columns, column width, counted as characters, number of rows, and height of the rows as the number of lines. In the Set Cell Styles box, you can specify a cell style for rows in the table, choosing between three options, Title, Header, 
or data. You can change or create new table style calling for the table style dialog from the insert table dialog box or independently using annotate ribbon tab or table style command. Let's create a new table style named T style. I'm choosing an existing table from the current drawing as a template for my table style. Now you can see it on preview. If you change your mind, you can remove the selected table from the style using the remove button. Table direction defines direction of a table. Down option creates a table that reads from top to bottom and new rows will be added below the current row. Up option creates table that reads from bottom to top and new rows will be added above the current row. In the cell style box, you can create as many cell styles as you want to settings appearances of cell properties, text, and borders. To edit a table, select Table Cell or use the Table Edit command. Table Cell contextual ribbon tab appears where you can use following options. Insert and delete rows and columns. Merge and unmerge cells. Log cell data and formatting from editing and customize the data format. Let's move to the MTEX improvements. The biggest addition in this area is a new paragraph dialog for editing paragraph settings for selected multi-line text. The paragraph dialog box is available from the paragraph button or through the context menu and contains the following options. Ability to add new tabs with particular alignment, Modify and remove existing tabs. Select decimal symbol to use for decimal points. Set left and right indents for paragraph. Paragraph alignment. Paragraph spacing and paragraph line spacing. Also, the column settings dialog box is available for the properties pane in IntelliCut 10.1. In IntelliCAD 10.1, you have an ability to reset the program to its initial state using the Restore Default Settings tool. It's available through the Start menu and offers the ability to select files to reset and store a backup to a specified location. Also, the Restore Default Settings tool gives you the opportunity to backup configuration files without deleting them. Now let's move to new commands. IntelliCAD 10.1 has several additions for arrays, array polar, array rect, array path, and array edit. Array polar command is analogous to the polar option in the previous array command, which is now called array classic, and creates multiple copies of selected entities in a circular pattern. Array rect command arrays entities in a rectangular pattern and is equivalent to the rectangle option of the array classic command. Array path command evenly allocates entity copies along a selected path or part of a path. The path can be an arc, helix, circle, ellipse, line, polyline, 3D polyline, or spline. All these commands are available through the ribbon, command line, toolbar, and menu. The new array commands create an associative array entity that retains the original array parameters and can be modified. Associative array entities can be edited through the Properties pane or using the Array Edit command, which is available through the command line or a double-click on an array entity. Next is the Layer P command which reverses recent changes made to layers using the layer command, explore layers, layer control, or layer states manager. One more addition to layer functionality is the new restore layer state 2 option in the layer states manager dialog box for paper space. Now you can apply a layer state to the current viewport, all viewports, model space, or you can change layers across all layouts and viewports using the All Layouts and Viewports option. So I have a drawing with different layouts with multiple viewports per layout, and I want the C-Line layer to be visible only in model space. 
Instead of changing its state for each layout and viewport individually, I'm going to use the Layer State Manager dialog. Create a new layer state and during layer state editing, leave only the C line layer and freeze it for all layouts and viewports in the drawing. And now all construction lines are not displayed as the C line layer has been frozen in all viewports in all layouts. IntelliCAD 10.1 provides new commands for quickly creating, modifying and exploding groups and new advanced scripts for quick editing groups. In previous versions of IntelliCAD, the only way to create and manage groups was using the Group Manager dialog, but now you can use new Quick Group option for easier group creation. All you have to do is to press the Quick Group button and select entities you want to group. A new group has a standard look with a single group point and the bounding box. But you can change group groups to use advanced groups from the drawing settings dialog. And now when a group is selected, you can see new groups are available. Move group, rotate group, scale groups and individual groups for entities. Groups created using Quick Group are by default unnamed and are visible and available for editing in the Group Manager dialog when the Display Unnamed Groups checkbox is checked. Groups can also be edited using the Edit Group button. To ungroup, use the Ungroup button. All mentioned functionality for Quick Groups is also available through the context menu. These new intuitive group features allow users to quickly leverage the power of groups. I would like to go back to the drawing settings dialog and demonstrate the advanced groups for blocks. When selected, besides the insertion point grip, move, rotate and scale groups display. Also, advanced groups for blocks allow non-uniform scaling that is not available for groups. If you have dimensions intersecting each other or your geometry, you can break dimension extension lines using the dim break command to make your drawing look clean. The auto option places dimension breaks at all intersection points for the selected dimension. Dimension break size is controlled by the break size value in the dimension style manager. Also, you can remove a dimension break using the Remove option in the Dim Break command. Next is the Import command, which imports coordinates from TXT and CSV files into a drawing. I have a TXT file with several 3D points, calling for the Import command, and now I have three ways to import these points. As point entities, as polyline vertices of a closed or open polyline and as spline vertices of a closed or open spline. If importing as points, you can change the point size using PD size system variable. Add a blank line between coordinates to create multiple entities. Map import command allows to import files of the SHP, SDF and SQLite spatial formats. In IntelliCAD 10.1, you can insert dynamic blocks that were created in a different CAD program. During insertion, press Ctrl to cycle through insertion points that are defined by its dynamic parameters. And the last command I would like to review is the clone command. This command draws the same entity type with the same properties as an entity you select. For example, I want to draw an ellipse and I already have an ellipse in my drawing. So for easier access, I'm pressing the clone button, selecting the ellipse, and now you can see how all properties for the future ellipse have changed to the one I've selected. And it put me right into the ellipse command. It works the same way for all kinds of primitives, but this feature is particularly useful when inserting blocks or hatches. Hatches, for example, will keep properties like pattern name, angle, scale, etc. And you can see how a new hatch matches an existing one precisely. And the last usage of the clone command I would like to demonstrate is for AC entities. 
you don't have to find out what your wall width is, what type of door, window, stairs or railing you have in your drawing. The clone command will match all these properties for you. You can access the clone feature from the ribbon or command bar as the add selected command. Several changes in the UI have been made in Intellica 10.1. The new source column in the commands list was added to the customized user interface dialog. The alias edit command was added for another way to customize aliases. Also, minimize, maximize and close buttons were added for the drawing windows. Let's review graphics improvements. Sometimes the model you are working with can be very complicated, so it's hard to understand what you are looking at when switching between views. In Intellica 10.1, smooth transition between different views was added. To control this feature, use the View Transition dialog box or the VT Enable system variable, where you can enable animation for view transitions. You also can set the transition speed and performance. So I've enabled animation during view rotation and pan and zoom, and now you can see how the model smoothly changes its view and you know exactly which view you are looking at. And at the end, some performance improvements. About 1.8 times performance increase for grapes editing and 2.1 times performance increase for grapes displaying. You can see detailed video here. This is all I have for now. Please leave your comments and thank you for watching this video.